So parameters are a way of passing information into a transform that changes the behavior of a, of a transform. If you've ever worked with um, uh, programming on the web or any kind of programming really, you pass parameters into a, a function or a page or anything like that in order to change the behavior. Well, XSL has parameters as well. Um, the problem for us is that most of the techniques for passing parameters into transforms, or in fact all of the, all of the mainstream techniques, require some kind of program that accepts the, the parameters and then passes them into the, um, into the transform. So we're going to do a very simple kind of um, uh, simulation of passing uh, parameters into transforms, and we'll do it this way uh, that I'll demonstrate now. So I created this temp file or this temp XML file a while ago for a different demo. Um, I'm going to make uh, it a little fancier. ID equals uh, quote I1. Okay, I'm just I'm adding IDs to all the child nodes so that we can tell them apart. And let me make that 10, 11, 12. So they're different ones, 14. And then this one's going to be 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, and 0. OK, so now I have something a little bit more to work with here so we can see how this works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an attribute on the root node, and I'm going to call it what, or how about this, ID to form. And in that ID to transform, I'm going to cite one of these IDs, like I can choose ID 12, for example. So what I just did was basically, I created an ID on the root, and when I change that parameter, it's now going to affect the way the transform works. So we're jury rigging the transform. This isn't a real way of passing parameters, but it's going to work just fine for what we need to do in this course. So now back over here in temp XSL, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable, and the variable is going to be ID to transform, or what X form, I can't remember anymore. No, nope, ID to transform. So I'm going to name this ID to transform. And I'm going to select whack uh, root whack at ID to transform. There. Now what I've effectively done is I've moved the whatever is in that ID to transform attribute into a var variable in my transform. And now it's uh, now it's available to us. Now here's the technique that I'm going to use once it's once that ID to transform is available to us. I'm going to do this, XSL for each. Uh, and I can just do star where at ID equals dollars ID to transform. So what is that doing? That's creating a for each loop that selects, whoops, that selects the node that has the ID that is in this variable. And of course, that variable is the one that um, is the value that I already typed into the, into the instance. Okay, so go away box. Um, so what all, this, what all this ends up doing is putting my transform at the node that I want to transform. And now I can say XSL value of uh, dot. And I will get out the value of the node that the transform is on. So this may be this may take a little bit of looking at to understand, but 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 try to figure out why this is a way of passing the ID into the transform and then having the transform change its behavior depending on the ID that I've passed in it. I put I pass the ID in an attribute in the instance. And that attribute then is transferred into this variable, and now the variable is usable for us. The way we're, we've chosen to use the variable is to say that I'm going to set my current node using the for each statement to whatever node that ID is on. And now all the code that I do, it's only one line here, but it could be hundreds of lines, is all relative to the node that I passed in in that parameter. So this is a way of passing in parameters. 
and I'll get if I change the node in in uh, in temp XML from one node to the other, I'll get an output here. I guess we should um, we should prove that. So let me do this transform, and I get nothing because I messed up something. Okay, well that's always good to 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 do that. And why do I why do I not have anything? Let's see, did I mess something up? Okay, so here you'll see a little bit of debugging. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to get the value of the variable. Make sure the variable is getting into the transform first of all. And if the variable is not getting in, then I know that I have to back up and figure out why the variable is not getting in. You've probably already seen what's wrong here. Okay, so I got the variable. See that? I12. So I got the variable. So that's not my problem. Back up here, I have the right thing in here. And well, do I not? Am I not calling these ID? No, those are called ID. Oh, duh. Okay, you probably already figured this out. This is looking for star in the wrong place. I need a whack whack star here. All right, so let's try that again. Temp XML, transform. Now I get I am child number two. If I go back over here and change this from 12 to 14, now I get child number four. Okay, so I've effectively passed in that ID from the instant into the schema. And as I said, in the real world, you would actually pass it in via a program. But since in this course, we don't really have a program intervening between our parameters and our transforms, this method will, will do just fine for us.